I'm going to show how to use a multimeter to test a car battery. Before using a multimeter, it's a good idea to test the multimeter and its leads. Set the multimeter to the ohm setting. If you don't have an auto ranging multimeter, set it to the lowest number on your ohms settings. Place the black lead in the common jack and the red lead in the ohms jack. Hold the leads together or clip them together. The reading on the multimeter should be around one or two ohms. With the leads clipped together, move the leads around, especially wiggle them where they attach to the probes and where they attach to the plugs for the jacks. Meter leads will often break at these places and if the leads are starting to break inside of the casing when you wiggle them the display will start to jump around. It won't hold steady at one to two ohms. It might spike up to mega ohms or you know five six hundred ohms. It'll be really obvious when you move it around that you have a bad multimeter lead. If that happens you need to get new multimeter leads before going any further. Set the multimeter to read DC voltage. It might say DC V like this one or it may have a V with a straight and dotted line over top of the symbol. If your multimeter does not auto range like this one then go to your DC voltage and look for the range just above the voltage you're trying to read. The car battery should read around 12 to 14 volts so pick the next highest number up from 12 to 14 volts which would probably be 20. If the multimeter has more than one jack place the black lead in the common jack and the red lead in the jack that says DC voltage. Check the battery cables to make sure that they're tight and not green with corrosion. Also the battery should be tightly secure. Corroded connections on a battery can compromise the charging system. To get an accurate reading, it's recommended that the temperature be between 60 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Put the black lead on the black terminal. It's a good idea to scrape it a little bit so you have a good connection. Do the same by putting the red lead on the red terminal. You should read between 12.4 and 12.6 volts. This voltage is a little high because I just ran the car and there's a surface voltage on it. If the battery has a surface voltage on it, turn the headlights on without the car running and let the headlights on for about two minutes. After turning the headlights off, wait another two or three minutes. Retest the battery voltage. And I now have 12.65, that's a good voltage. If the battery reads less than 12.4 volts, it could be bad. You may want to check the manufacturing date on the battery. If it's older than three years old, it's possible that the battery is going bad. However, they can last up to six or seven years. I'll show you another test that you can do to check the battery's health. It takes a lot more amps to turn the car over than it does to run something like light bulbs. I'll start the car and watch the multimeter while the car is turning over. If the battery dips below 9 or 10 volts, that's an indication that it may be near the end of its life. The voltage dipped down into the acceptable range and it bounced back quickly. If 
the voltage dips below 9 volts and doesn't bounce back very quickly, then it's likely there is a problem with the battery. When the car was running, the voltage jumped up about 2 volts from the reading I had when the car wasn't running. And that's a good reading for this Honda Civic to prove that the charging system was working correctly. If the voltage had dropped below 12.65 volts, then that would indicate that there was a problem with the charging system. And if the voltage would have been higher than, say, 2 volts over the non running voltage, maybe around 15 or 15 and a half volts, that could indicate that the charging system is overcharging, and that's not a good thing either. If the battery passes the test and the alternator doesn't appear to be charging properly, there's a few other things to think about before replacing the alternator. If you've been hearing a belt squealing, that's often a sign that the belt is slipping. Check out your alternator belt. If it's shiny, that's also an indication that the belt's been slipping. If the belt's slipping and it can't turn the alternator, then the alternator can't provide electricity to operate the charging system. If the alternator is making noise, it's possible that the bearings are going bad. The computer that tells the alternator to turn on could not be sending a signal to the alternator. The wiring to the alternator could be damaged or have a poor connection. Some cars have a regulator built into the alternator and some have a separate voltage regulator. The voltage regulator could be bad. I hope you find this video helpful. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.